Shavua Tov, everyone. Welcome to video number 28 in our, in our WhatsApp group. Uh, I freely adapted this story from the translation of the esteemed Ori Kaplun in the Treasury of Hasidic Tales, and I retitled it The Only Light in Town. Uh, <clears throat> Reb, Reb Yechiel Meir of, was the Rebbe of Glustinin, and, and he was n known by a lot of people as the Tehillim Yid. The, the Psalms Jew, because he, always, he often advised people who came to him for uh, for help that they should uh, say a lot of Tehillim, a lot of Tehillim sincerely. He was also called by some uh, one of the Lamed Vav Siddiquim Nistarim, one of the 36 hidden righteous upon whom the the, the survival of the world depends, uh, because because of his his selfless, simple, kind. And, and humble lifestyle. Uh, before becoming a Rebbe, he had been a disciple of, of the Kotzka Rebbe and of the Radmins, the Rebbe, the Rebbe Yaakov Arye. Uh, and, when, and when this latter passed away in 1874, so then Rebbe Yechil took on being Rebbe in Glustinin. And one, uh, one cold winter night, a traveler who had, who had been uh, delayed and perhaps lost on the way, Found, uh, found his way in, in to Glustin in, in, in the middle of the night. It was cold, it was dark, it was, it was snowing. He was in a desperate situation, but as he walked around the streets, there was not a single light on. Uh, everyone was sleeping. Finally, he found, saw one house with a light on, so he, uh, with trepidation, he knocked on the door. Uh, almost immediately, it was, it was opened uh, by a Hasidic Jew, and who invited him in and gave him some uh, some schnapps, some bromfen, uh, uh, along with some biscuits. Uh, the schnapps, schnapps being absolutely necessary to warm him up. Uh, the, and, and he told and he told the traveler that he was welcome to stay the night. Uh, he had a place a place for him to stay the night. Uh, the traveler uh, swallowed down the, the the schnapps and and the biscuits, and it was clear to his host that he was still hungry. So, um, so the uh, but what he what the traveler didn't realize was that his host was the Hasidic Rebbe, Rabbi Yechiel Meir of Glustinin. Uh, he just thought it was a regular Hasidic Jew. He didn't he didn't realize. So the Rebbe went out into the kitchen to look to see if there was any other food he could give the traveler, and all he was able to find was some uh, some leftover a quantity of leftover cold porridge. And a saucepan with some fat in it. I assume uh, schmaltz, chicken fat. So, uh, not knowing any any better, he just threw it all into one saucepan, into the saucepan, and stuck the saucepan in the oven where there were, there was still some red hot coals. And after a while it was hot, he took it up, took it off. He gave it to the traveler, who uh, who enjoyed it very much. He ate and was satisfied. And, and, and then Rabbi Yaakov Arya said, okay, now let me show you where you can sleep. And he took him into a, a room, a bedroom, and, and told him you can sleep here. The traveler just uh, uh, leapt on the bed, the boots and all, and, and fell right asleep. He was so exhausted from the very difficult journey he had had. Uh, uh, what, he, what he didn't realize this time was that this room and this bed was the Rebbe's room. And... and uh, and it, and it being a small house, there was no other, there was no other available room, and there was, and now there was nowhere for the Rebbe to to sleep. But he just stayed awake the whole night, uh, learning. Uh, in the morning, when the family got up, he he quickly ran to them to tell them not to make any noise, not to disturb the guest. They have a guest that's sleeping in his room. And he himself was very quiet. And when it was and uh, when it was time for the first minion in synagogue, so he left for sure. Um, later, when when the when the traveler awoke and and went to the synagogue, uh, so uh, people greeted him, Shalom Aleichem. They they asked they asked him where he's staying, and and he said he didn't know the name of the person he's staying with. He didn't even know his name. So they asked for a description, and 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 when and when the, he told them, uh, so they informed him that <laughs> that you you were staying in the house of the Rebbe himself, 
and, you, and the bed you were sleeping in was the Rebbe's bed. The, he, the traveler went pale with shock. He was so upset. Um, immediately after davening, he ran. He ran back to the house and 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 pleaded with with the Rebbe to forgive him. He, he apologized. He said, "I'm sorry. I didn't know. I, did, I wasn't acquainted with you before. I came in the middle of the night. Nobody told me." Uh, and uh, the Rebbe said to him, "I refuse to accept your apology." Now the traveler was really upset, and he tried again, explaining that it was only inadvertently. He didn't do it intentionally. Uh, he didn't mean to, to, to demean the Rebbe's, uh, the honor due to the Rebbe and have the Rebbe uh, treat him like, uh, the, the Rebbe act like a servant. I mean, that, and, to, and to displace the Rebbe from his bed. This is so terrible. Please, please forgive me. So <laughs> the Rebbe said to him, uh, uh, Rabbi Yosef said to him, I will forgive you, but only on one condition. The next time, you, uh, or any time that you pass through Augustinian, that you stay with me, you know, uh, and, 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 and allow me to, to, to prepare food for you and serve you. Because when do I ever get a chance to make this mitzvah? They always spoil it for me.